Hi, everybody. Welcome to Pockets Full of Soup, the storytelling show. I'm your host, Jared Petty. I'm joined by a delightful friend. Who are you? I'm Lexi Pence. You are Lexi Pence. AKA Let's Get Lexi. Let's Get Lexi, indeed. What does getting Lexi entail? If one wants to get Lexi, how does one get Lexi? That's a great question. Um, on my YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Let's Get Lexi. I'm also on all the socials. And that's how you get me. That's how you get you on all the, the socials. socials. And let's get Lexi on all those. Um, yeah. All right. I yeah. took a swig of my water. There's like, I am unprepared to respond. <laughs> Lexi, you've been on the show before. It's been a long I time. Have. I know, Jared. Yeah, it's so, so good to see you. Yeah, it's been a long, long time. About a year, right? I, yes. And you've been yes. off, like, you've been jet setting in that time. Yes. A exotic live uh, of travel and amazing things. You, you yeah. went to cool places this year. Where'd you go? Is it exotic? I think it's, well, I mean, you, you mentioned, I believe, Fiji at one point. Yeah. That's pretty I guess exotic. I was thinking more of the baseball season. So I was like, is Cincinnati well, exotic? <laughs> no, I've been to Cincinnati. Yeah. It's not exotic. Mm. I like the Reds as well as the next yeah. person, but I, don't, <laughs> but I don't think Cincinnati's exotic at all. I don't know. What's um, the most exotic MLB town? I, 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 are there any exotic... MLB towns. Yeah, and, and, and well, what I, do you consider like? What yeah, do you consider exotic? I don't know. I'm trying to. I, I, you know, if I, I don't think there are any. Maybe they're Miami? interesting ones. Miami, may, may, Miami can have exotic. It has an exotic if element that's like to it. What you? I think my definition of exotic is like very island like, hmm. right? If, if Will Smith wrote a song about it, it's exotic. I don't know. I don't know. I, Miami's. Well, do you like Miami? I do like Miami. Yes. What do you like about Miami? Um, they have great coffee. They have a Cubano coffee, yeah. which I love. Um, the food is unreal. Yeah. Um, and then actually this last, this recent time that I went this past year, I found this really great, um, art little like district mm -hmm. in Miami, which I know they're really into art, but this was like graffiti art. Ooh, wow. And it Where was about? called you Winwood. Know? The Wig, Wigwood? Winwood. Winwood. Or the yeah. Winwood. I don't know the W-I-N-W-O-O-D. It's on my... Instagram if you guys ever want to really look it up. I'm okay. pretty sure it's Winwood, And it's like this whole little town of just like graffiti art and local artists. Oh, wow. And it's so cool. And you like walk around. There's a restaurant in there. And like it's like Instagram gold. But <laughs> Just beautiful things to yeah, see. Yeah. Huh? But it's like there's like a lot of really cool messages that a lot of these local artists have. Mm. And very much on like the Hispanic culture and street art and, you know, all sorts of things. Mm. Now part of, of your things. family's background is Puerto Rican. Right? Yes. Uh, so does that in any way connect you to Florida? Or, or is that... Did did you did your family come to New York or where where did they come to um, the States? No. They went to New York. They went to New York. Yeah, okay. my mom went to New York. So your mom went to New York. So that's that's the connection there. Yes. Do you remember New York? Like were you were you ever there? No, I was never there. Okay, I yeah. wasn't sure. I, I grew up in Los Angeles. You grew up in LA the whole so the, you were born in LA? I was born in LA. Born in LA. Okay. So California your whole life. California wow. my whole life. My goodness. Yeah. Well, I love uh, I love Miami too for a lot of the reasons you said incredible people, incredible culture and ridiculously good coffee. I, I had my first uh, cup of Cuban coffee in, in Haleo one night. It was, it's incredible. It, it, I know. And you, we can just talk and be like, coffee, coffee. But seriously, this seriously, is Seriously, like it's so coffee. good. I think it's because they put so much sugar in it. It is. It's like... Yeah. <laughs> It's, but it's, then they put milk too, I think. I don't I know what the recipe is. I just yeah. know I want to drink all of it. Yeah, I should do a video on that. That's a yeah. great video. Oh, wait, uh, to go down there and, and make a Cuban coffee visit? Oh, I was just going to do it in my kitchen. You could do that too. You could just I like. <laughs> I do like your idea of going you, to Miami. and <laughs> Oh, go to Halea, get some Cuban food, get a Cuban coffee. It's all amazing. It's a good life right there. Uh, you're, you dream a lot bigger than I do, Jared. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> He's like, go down there, make it. Go there and get all the ingredients. I'm like, oh, I was just going to go. Make it in my kitchen. Make it in my kitchen. <laughs> yeah, That's see what I have in my cupboard. You got to dream big, right? <laughs> I like yeah. it. I like oh, it. I don't it. know that you did all this. Things. I'm talking about coffee, but you did all this travel this year. I mean, you, you, you just got back from your honeymoon. Right? Yes, we finally took our honeymoon. And uh, you guys went to some pretty fantastic places. And you yes. had a lot of pictures of that up on. I was following on Twitter. I imagine your Instagram just looks spectacular right now. It looks pretty good. I yeah. actually look like I curated it, which I don't usually curate my photos Ooh. on Instagram. Okay. So for a while there, they looked. I look like a real Instagrammer. <laughs> <laughs> so where were you? Um, well, because we finished early this season, unfortunately, but fortunately we got to take a trip to Greece, mm -hmm. which was really special because I'm half Greek and right. I was really excited to take Hunter to the motherland. So what was, the, have you been there before? I've been there before. I've okay. been there plenty of times before yeah. um, just because I had so much family there. Mm -hmm. But And that's um, your dad's side of the family, That's right? my dad's side yeah. of the family. So your mom's side Puerto Rican, your dad's side's Greek. Yes. Yeah. And getting to take Hunter there was amazing. 
So he like learned little pieces of Greek mm -hmm. and he would speak them to like all the yayas, which is um, Greek or grandma for uh, in Greek. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. So yeah, yeah. And so he would like speak Greek to all the yayas and they'd be like, oh, <laughs> you know, oh, Bob, Bob, Hunter. Oh, that's um, fantastic. Yeah. Please tell me there's a video of that somewhere Yeah, happening. you know, <laughs> so there's video of him speaking Greek, which is pretty amazing. Yeah. So What's I was he like, saying? just like, hello, good morning. Thank mm -hmm. you please like How's the basics Greek? it's the same as hunters yeah okay so, <laughs> so no, passable. it's a little bit better but yeah. um yeah so where'd you go in greece uh we went to athens mm -hmm. um mykonos santorini and crete Ooh, and what's the appeal of greece for you uh, first culturally with with your family being from there what does that mean to you culturally well i grew up greek like my mom pretty much raised us greek oh okay yeah so she converted to greek orthodox when she married my dad mm -hmm. and so we just grew up like i grew up greek dancing i grew up going to greek school um we got married in the greek church mm -hmm. um at my wedding there was greek dancing like it's okay just, so let's say we've already had greek dancing greek school greek greek church yeah for people that aren't familiar with what that's like what's greek dancing why is that important growing up in a greek a, dancing a, a is Greek like, and american family yeah so greek dancing for me like growing up was just it's just a way to keep I guess Greek dancing was a way to tell a story mm -hmm. back then, way back when. And, you know, they have stories that they tell of like the Turks coming in and, and them surviving and like what women would do or men would do to survive. And some of them would just commit suicide. So there's like all sorts of dances, dances of celebration. I know I just dropped that. Bomb no, I'm just you. like, well, that's, yeah. that's dark and dismal. But it's kind of a way to like tell the story and like singing. And there's obviously like celebration and, you know right um so it's a combination of storytelling and cultural memory with yeah, celebration yeah and, and you mentioned uh you mentioned uh, the turkish conflict the, the greco-turkish conflict goes back a really long time really long a, time a, you mentioned crete earlier yeah and that's that's a that's a point of contention yes in, in regard to that and uh, we got that back <laughs> so um but uh so greek dancing part of remembering that heritage did you enjoy it when you were a kid Yes, I actually enjoyed it so much. I competed in Greek dancing. No kidding. Yes. How'd you do? Um, I don't think my team ever won. Yeah. To be honest, I don't know. I did it more to like it was just fun, something else to do, and like my dad was really strict, so that was like one of the things that got me out of the house. What does it look like? It's just you dance in like a half circle. Okay. And then you just do like cool footwork. Cool footwork. Yeah. Right. Are yeah. you a good dancer in general? Um. I, I don't really know. It depends on what your base of good dancing is. Well, like you have you have a fairly uh, a fairly well laid out spacious apartment I have here. Do you dance rhythm. around when nobody's here? I think I have rhythm. You have rhythm. Do you yeah. go dancing? Like, do you go out and go dancing? No, I don't. Do you dance at home? Yeah, I yeah. dance at home. You dance at home? Yeah. Do you care if anyone's watching? No. So like, what? no, I'm not embarrassed about dancing. Okay, great. So yeah. I am. I'm terrified. You to dance. are? Oh, I'm not going to dance in front of people. No way. Oh, my gosh. Really? Oh, I'm so terrified. Look at me. I'm. I, it would be like Humpty Dumpty getting down. No, it's like, like look it, at you. You're adorable and you're dancing. <laughs> I can't dance. I'm so bad at no. it. My hips don't move right. I, Angie likes to, to tease about this one. I, you know, people say they can't dance, right? Right. And they're, they're just, maybe they're embarrassed. But really, I can't dance. I, I just don't, I have like Pentecostal hips or something. They don't move right. Okay. And she teases me about in college. She was trying to teach me to dance. And finally, she like put her hands on my hips and just started moving them yeah. forcibly. Yeah, like, I'll just do it for you. And she's, and I was, and I, she said, she says, I, I, I remember this. She says, I started going, ow, it hurts. <laughs> and I wasn't joking. It was just muscles I don't know how to use, right? Or it being, actually pains you to yeah, dance. Yeah, it's like, I don't know how to do it. But, but do you like to dance? Regardless of whether or not you think you know how to do it, do you like to do it? Yeah, I see the appeal. I really wish that I were, I felt good doing it in front of people because dancing is fun. So you just need to find the confidence behind it. I do. It's whimsical. Yeah. Uh, I do. It's it's full of... Because like I love to sing, but I know I'm not a singer. Okay. I, no, but you still love to sing. I still love to sing. I'm like you. I won't ever sing in front of anyone, but... I do love to sing. Oh my god. But gosh. it's awful. It's awful. Oh, we should we should challenge ourselves here. Maybe I'll tell you what. I'll dance in front of people in your presence if I can get you into a karaoke booth. Not not like one of the Japanese style ones, just oh my with god. friends. That to is sing. like my biggest like that would I like I when someone's like, Let's go do karaoke, I'm like 
Why? No, Why I'm not going to do that. I used to be that way before I went to Japan and the little booths where you're just with the people you love. Have you ever seen these? Yeah. Uh, I love those I've discovered. I thought I would hate them, but it's just like, it's like going to a movie except instead of going to a movie, you, you, you drink libations and eat bad food and, and sing. sing your voices out. And, and uh, when you, you've got like 20 American and Japanese people at 4 a.m. crammed into a tiny room singing CeeLo Green at the top of their voices <laughs> off key. It's a great event. It's fun. That's awesome. Uh, but no, I would never want to put you on the spot. I don't want yeah. to make you feel uh, Thank you. uncomfortable at all. It's funny because um, with the guys over at Kind of Funny, when we launched that first Hunter Pence, um, Hunter Pence Signs rap video. Yeah. I think when Tim asked me to do it, I was like, yes, this is my moment. Like, I'm going to do it. And that's in the point when I was like, I cannot sing or rap oh, or do anything. It just doesn't as come out the way you I want it to. As much as I want to, it just like doesn't. Tim was probably like, why did I ask you? So you did not sing? No. I mean, I rapped, but I feel like that's kind of different. Did you, you like Frank Sinatra, talk. like Frank Sinatra singing? You're just kind of talking, rapping? Yeah, it's kind of like, it like a talk. Yeah. Yeah, because some rapping is like singing, talking, and some yeah. rapping is talking. Yeah. So you felt comfortable with that? No, I was terrified. Oh, you were still terrified. Was terrified, okay. but I'd already committed and I wasn't going to let my boys down. So I was like, I just got to do it. Oh, that's fantastic. I, I'm know? glad that you were able to go through with it. I'm yeah. sorry it was difficult for you. No, but, God bless Nick and Tim because they walked me through every step. So When when IGN did the thrift shop video, are you in that? I'm trying to remember. No, no, no. no. Okay, I wasn't I there then. I couldn't remember then. I, uh, I I haven't watched that in a long time. So, was, But there were people singing and dancing in that. And so I was like, I wonder if Alexis is No, I was definitely not. Somewhere. Like, you know, Naomi Kyle, she can sing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Naomi's got a she great voice. She can sing and Tim can rap. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know who has an incredible voice? Uh, Naomi has a great voice. Tim can rap. Uh, do you know Chastity um, that's over at Yeah, Spot yeah, now? yeah. She can sing. She can? Oh, my gosh. She, she has I'm a great so voice. I'm so jealous of people that can sing. Yeah, she can sing And so Nick well. Scarpino can sing. I didn't know Nick could sing. Oh, my gosh. Nick <gasps> has a voice of an angel. I had no idea. Nick Scarpino. Oh, my Scarpino. gosh. He could be like, he could do acapella. Like, he's so, he's a beautiful voice. Oh, we need to form like a games entertainment and YouTube choir or something. Oh, my like gosh. Go he caroling. should just have his own solo. I want to get Nick to sing on the show. Do you yeah. think that's doable? I think he would 100% do it. I still owe him one of the one of the Tamago Sensei t-shirts. I need to give him that. I keep forgetting. Oh, him, so yeah. He wanted one, so got that i got a waffle house mug i gotta give damon i'm behind you are I, behind I, I start making lists i know i'm making Gotta lists, making lists. Keep checking it twice so greeks uh greek dancing oh, yeah. then you mentioned <laughs> uh you mentioned greek um greek school mm-hmm. what's greek school like mm. what are you doing greek school oh gosh greek school I don't For know. I feel like I just got yelled, like, what's yelled at all the time. Well, what are you supposed to be learning in Greek school? You're studying Greek. the language? You're supposed to be learning Greek, yeah. Okay. To but read like, and speak it? or Yes. Okay. Read, speak, write. And this is contemporary Greek, I see? Yes. So Greek for me, has a very special place in my life. I think you know this, but my undergraduate, a good portion of my study was around ancient Greek. Oh, Um, yeah, yeah. We talked about this. Which is ridiculously different from modern Greek uh, to the point that I'm completely useless uh, in any kind of actual uh, Greek conversation. But yeah, I can pick up a word here and there, but a lot of the forms have changed. But I really enjoy the study of the language. So I wonder... It is a beautiful language. But when you're forced to study it, that's very different. I was choosing to. yeah. When you're forced to do it as a kid and you don't really grasp the reason why you're doing it, uh-huh. you're just like, I know all my friends are here, so I'm going to go too. So what are the reasons for real? Is it a cultural thing? Is it a Yeah, I just think thing? it's like, no, I just think it's like what you do, your parents make you do to, so you don't lose your culture, your language. Okay. Well, joke's on them. It didn't work. <laughs> Your dad's crying a single tear Yeah, just somewhere. one tear down. He's like, my daughter. I know. Oh. He tried so hard, you do you, guys. Do you remember any words that you like? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, like I love how, like, good morning. Like, Greek is a beautiful language. Mm-hmm. And had I gotten the opportunity to, like, really grasp, I should have learned it. I definitely should have learned it. Mm. That's, like, shame on me. Oh, I, don't, I don't think that's a shame on you. I no, mean, it you were is. a kid, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah you know, but, like, good morning is Kalimera. Oh, that does sound lovely. Right? Yeah. And then, um, how are you? Tikanis. What's your favorite? What do you mean, what's my favorite? What's your favorite word in Greek? We ask in pockets a lot what people's favorite words are. Oh, what's your favorite Greek sagapo. word? Sagapo. What's that mean? I love you. Aww. I know. Did you say it to Hunter? <laughs> I do. Yeah, he learned how to say it too. Oh, that's so sweet. It's cute. I love you is is a is a fun thing to say in just about any, any it, language. Yeah, I agree. It's just like, oh, I'm so happy right there. That's a good one. And finally, you mentioned uh, the Greek church, which um, your parents were married in, you said, mm-hmm. right? Your mother mm-hmm. uh, 
uh, converted to the Greek church. Mm -hmm. Why is that important? Um, I just think the religion aspect of being Greek is really important. It just hasn't really changed since forever. (laughs) Yeah. Greek Orthodoxy is really old. Yeah. Um, and, and very seeped in tradition and culture. I mean, it's called Greek Orthodoxy is the name of a, a nation or a culture in the name of the church. That's really rare. It's Uh, really rare. So they overlap in ways that a lot of other, uh, uh, religious groups don't. What's, uh, what's, what's something that's distinctive about growing up in the Greek Orthodox religion? Um, I think like the icons hmm. are extremely graphic. Can you explain what icons I, are for people who don't know? Yes. Um, that's, I'm glad that you say that because I think I, I say it and I think people know, but a lot of people don't. Mm-hmm. Um, but icons are like these images and usually in the Greek Orthodox church, they do them in mosaics. Like they're all mosaics mm-hmm. and they're the images of certain scenes of the Bible. So um, I grew up with like, a bloody Jesus Christ, like on the cross, just and hanging like, up out there. Totally normal. What I would see at four years just old, just gory. And, yeah, and like he would have blood, and... blood dripping from his hands, uh-huh. and he would have blood dripping from where the, he got speared uh-huh. right here. Um, and he'd be like dying on the cross. So as a kid, did he? Was it just not strange at all, or was he scary, or was it like, oh, cool, bleeding Jesus? It like, just wasn't. It was just always there, so you didn't really yeah. think much of it. And then for. Easter, and I don't know if they do this in the Catholic Church or any other religion, but for Easter, they pin like a fake, like not a doll, but like a cardboard Christ to a cross, Mm -hmm. and then they take him down. And so then he kind of rises. P- you put him up there. Like? Yeah. So there's a whole ser- there's a whole service like every night in Holy Week where okay. they pin him up, and then they take him down, mm-hmm. right? And then they do the funeral service for him, and you walk outside the church with him in like kind of like a casket. Wow. And everyone like lights candles and they go around. So have a funeral because he's really dead. He's really dead, and then he rises. And so they put, when he's risen, do they just kind of stand him up someplace? Actually, or? the Easter service in a Greek Orthodox church is probably one of the most beautiful services ever. Um, it's at midnight. I don't know. Do they do that in Catholic or Presbyterian? Or I, w- I don't want to draw too broad a brush here, but yeah. uh, most, most traditions I'm familiar with don't typically have midnight services okay. for Easter. Okay. There are groups I know that do, do. but, okay. but, but so not Greek that So Greek Orthodox, many. they have a midnight service and at midnight, the lights go completely off in the church, which if you've never been in a church, <laughs> the lights off. And here I am at like five and this is happening and you're like, what is happening? And then they start to, at midnight, the bells start to ring in the church and it's so beautiful. And then everyone lights their own candles and that's how you light the church for when he rises. Oh, wow. And then you sing the Greek songs, like Christ is risen. And it's just so, it's so beautiful. And they do, they go, the Greek Orthodox Church goes all out for Easter. Like, so many flowers everywhere. They cover the aisle with like rose petals. And it's so, if you ever get the chance, go to one because it's so beautiful and it's incredibly moving. Like you're definitely, you're like, there is a sense of higher power here. Like there, you just, you, you just feel it, you know? Mm, That's beautiful. I I thank you for expressing that. Yeah. Also, if you're going to go, be sure to show up on the right Easter. Yes. Uh, That's another good point. (laughs) Yes, because Greek, Greek Orthodox Easter is not the same as Catholic Easter. Yes. Yeah, it's a different it's a different day, uh, and that has that has to do with calendar planning differences oh that go back hundreds of years. Don't worry about it. Just if you're going to go, be sure it's Greek Easter. Yes, make sure uh, when it's you Greek show Easter. Up, it's, that it's Orthodox Easter. Yeah, that's really cool. Thank you for sharing that. I I got a chance when I was five to be uh, a ring bearer in a Greek Orthodox wedding. Oh, and it was. Glorious. I mean, just the pageantry of the wedding was exceptional and walking in the circles around the altar and the white almonds and the, yeah. the multiple rings and the incredible, like, just the, the... It's a long service. They go all out. It we is go all out. long. Yes. It is long. It was July and the air conditioning was broken. Oh, no. But it was beautiful. Yes. Uh, it really was. And Greek Easter, this that description, I was like, oh, man, I, I need to do that. This yeah. Year. Greek it's Easter like, is great. definitely, it's really cool. And they, they do a lot. Like we roast afterwards, you know, they usually do like a big banquet because you've been fasting for 40 days. Mm. So hopefully. Um, 
And then they do like a huge feast after the service. What's the fasting? If you are taking part in the fasting, is that you're giving something up for, for, for Lent? Or um, is that... Yeah, I think they do like meat and okay. fish. I'm wondering. No, meat and... Is it just meat? I think I it's just know. meat. Depends on the tradition. Yeah, Again, I'm I, pretty I, sure I it's just sure. meat. They recommend it, but I think you can give up anything. Are you going to go this coming year? To Greek Easter? Yeah. Well, it's hard because in the baseball season, right. we are... Where are we normally? Oh, let's see. That would put you sometime between March, April-ish. Yeah. So sometimes we get to do it in Arizona, which yeah. when I can, I go. Yeah. And then when I'm not, we're usually somewhere. During spring training. Yeah. yeah. That jet, again, I, I, I teased you about the jet setting exotic lifestyle, but you do, you travel a great deal in your life. I, I do. Mean, a lot of your show centers around things that you kind of pick up on the yeah. road and, and bring back. But um, uh, once again, that show is... Let's get Lexi, youtube.com forward slash let's get Lexi. That's right. And um, you should check it out. Because yeah, it's cool. you should. But uh, you do travel a great deal, both for joy and for necessity. And you travel with the team a lot. I, I, um, what's the difference between traveling? I mean, that's traveling for work, traveling for family. Yeah. What's the difference in feeling between doing that and something like the trip you took to Greece? So uh, how, how does it feel different for you? Um, I guess the trip to Greece is more of like, and like on our honeymoon and stuff is yeah. more of a reset, right? How so? Because you're discovering places that you've never been before. Mm. And so there's, for me, like I love travel. Like I love to travel. Um, something about learning a new culture, discovering a new city, discovering a new country, um, a new la- hearing a new language. There's mm-hmm. something very thrilling and exciting and, and fun about it mm-hmm. for me. Um, and I get that that's not for everyone. Mm-hmm. Um I love it. I, I adore it. I do too. Yeah. And like the new foods and just their lifestyles and. Okay. You've mentioned food when we mentioned Miami. You mentioned food <laughs> when we mentioned Greece. What's somebody going to Greece need to try? Um, they're gyros. Okay. Greek gyros. Yeah. So. Gyros. There's one in um, Syntagma Square called the Nazis. No, not Syntagma Square. The flea market. Sorry. The flea market that's next to the flea mm-hmm. market, which is next to the Acropolis, like right under the Acropolis. Yeah. And the Nazis is what it's called. And that's the place to go? That's the place to go. Get some yum, yummy lamb wrapped in, wrapped in delicious bread. Yeah. Good and stuff. they put French fries in it now. Ooh. It's like evolved. Good. It's oh. so good. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Gyros evolved. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> so in addition to Greece, you also went a couple other places on this, this grand uh, yes. honeymoon adventure, though. So we didn't get to take our honeymoon last year. So we took it this year. And which was great. I couldn't imagine planning a honeymoon after planning a wedding. So um, we did, we went big. We did three weeks. We really just had to get out of Dodge. So <laughs> we did two weeks in New Zealand mm-hmm. and we did one week in Fiji. Now what's New Zealand like? New Zealand is amazing. How so? Like we're even thinking about like moving there. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. We fell in love with it. So it's for us, a lot of the people and the culture there is very much aligned with what hunter and i love what do you love we love being outdoors Mm -hmm. we love being connected to nature Mm -hmm. we love the community feel we love that everyone's really active and we love that everyone is into helping one another right Mm -hmm. so something that someone said to us out there was in new zealand if someone was on the side of the road they would help maybe not in like such a big city like auckland but in the smaller cities like they would pull over and ask hey do you need help Mm -hmm. and i was like dang if someone came to my mom's door, I don't even think she would open it. Hmm. And so you want to be a part of something more like that? Yes. You know, where I grew up at the time I was there was a little more like that. I think really? it's been less so in some ways since as, yeah. as people have become, uh, th- there's been some harshness, although there's still a lot of that congeniality. I don't want to speak badly of, of my town. There's so much warmth there still. But the appeal of that is extraordinarily powerful. I, I, I've been in love with New Zealand since I discovered New Zealand existed in my geography book. As a yeah. Kid. I would, if I could figure out how, I would move to, to get New there in a heartbeat. Yes. Heartbeat. The problem is, is immigrating to another country. It's not actually very easy. No. And, and now uh, they have a new prime minister that I guess is kind of kiboshing that. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. It's like outside investors if you wanted to buy land. Uh huh. Um, which is actually, it's really expensive there. Yeah, that's what I've heard. It's, it's, it's really expensive. Yeah. It's like I, almost as expensive as San Francisco. To live in Auckland? To live in 
like most of the big cities in mm. New Zealand. Yeah, I've heard it's pretty pretty rough. Or in the, although apparently some of that's offset by socialized healthcare and things like that. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, would you do it? Would you consider moving? Um, I would consider moving. Yes, I think I would just miss home too much. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, in a in a perfect dream world, it always sounds like a good idea. Mm-hmm. Um, but who knows? I'm open. You like travel? I do like to travel. Oh, yeah. But the only thing is that they're so far the other way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, you know, here it's like at least if you want to like jump to another country, like not that it's easy, but it's more doable. Yeah. But New Zealand, it's like you have to really. New Zealand is far. It's really it is far. A bit. Yeah, it is from the States, but a, a lovely place. And I'm, I'm glad to hear that the, the culture is as warm as you say. I didn't realize it was quite that expensive now. I knew it was expensive. It yeah, was it's expensive. like for apartments, they're really expensive. Cool. They're a couple million. I mean, if you want to buy a house, like it's close to a million now. Holy cow. Yeah. Oh, that is close to San Francisco prices. Yeah. That's- and the apartment crazy. rents too are really high. I'm, I'm never, I mean, I'm just never going to own a home. It's not going to happen as long as I'm you know? here, but, but still that's a, my New Zealand dream is dead. Oh no. Now what about the, what about the uh, third place that you went? Fiji. Fiji. Let's oh, I have Fiji. a great story for you oh, there. Oh, yay. Good Jared. story. Yay. Okay. So we were in Fiji just having our honeymoon and guess who's staying at our resort? Oh, who's staying at your resort? George Clooney. No kidding, really. Yes. Are you are you honeymoon name dropping? I'm honeymoon name dropping. You ran into George Clooney? We uh, ran into George Clooney that's... and his beautiful wife Alma. Oh, that's awesome. I almost died. Yeah. Was is is George Clooney? <laughs> I freaking I ge- I kicked out on this so hard, you guys. Like and the story the story gets better. Okay? So me and Hunter went out to dinner and someone had told us like George Clooney's on the resort. So I made it a joke like, oh, I'm on the Clooney watch, you know, like whenever we'd walk somewhere, I'd, I'd say like, oh, I wonder if that's the Cloon, you know? <laughs> and <laughs> so, clue. yeah, like if he was anywhere. <laughs> and then one day we're at one of like the places, it was like an all-inclusive resort. Yeah. And so we're at dinner and he comes and Hunter was like, he, I was talking to him like this and he was like, Alexis, don't turn around. And naturally I was like, whoosh. Like I just felt like just, a magnet. Yeah, turn around. Yeah, and it like, was George. Is he is he as beautiful in reality? He is. Yeah. Yeah. Is that pretty? So he had dinner there. It gets better. Okay. Stay with me, guys. Did did he marry you? No, 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 no. Okay. No, was, he's I not get, my type. Okay. Oh, he's not your type. No, but okay. we I got like a respect like I respect him as an actor. Yeah. He's a great actor. Just not your type. He's not my type, but he is like a good looking older man. And he's like, how, you don't get any more A-list than that. I was going to say. I the would, only more A-list is like the queen of England. I love Angie, but I would marry George Clooney tomorrow. You would? Okay. Oh, absolutely. He's oh, so beautiful. man. Oh, he's such a beautiful man. He, oh, yeah. I mean, he's a very good looking man yeah. and he's aging. Ama- like he doesn't even look. He looks amazing. Yeah. He just gets better looking. And his wife is like unrealistically pretty. Oh, really? She oh, did. my gosh. Oh, it's but but I interrupted your story. Please continue. Yeah, so, no, okay, yeah. he's like, Alexis, please don't stare. And I was like, I'm trying not to stare, but like, it's George freaking Clooney, <laughs> you know? Like, how do you not stare at this guy? You know? Like, that's who you talk about in conversations. <laughs> so, well, the next day... Was Hunter day, amused by this? He was just so embarrassed. He oh, was, was like, it because you kept staring? Yeah, and he was like, Alexis, like, stop. Like, well, I know what it he, feels it, like to be stared at. And I was like, shut up. Right. It's I mean, George Clooney. I mean, you guys go to dinner here in San Francisco. I imagine this, people are staring at you all the time. I yeah, mean, I mean, like, I don't notice. I guess he notices it, but, yeah. I, you know, I'm in my own world. So, yeah. anyways, so, whatever, we finish up, and then we go. And, um, but, I mean, I will say the service did get slower once he got here, because I think all the service staff was just, like, on him. Well, yeah, let's go, let's go help George Clooney. So, I was Clooney. like, oh, we got the, we got Clooned. <laughs> <laughs> So then the next day at lunch, like Hunter went to go work out. We worked out and then we went to go to this like bar, like this beach bar and we went to have lunch and who shows up is George and Amal. Oh, did, did they, they just stop by? Yeah. Like, and they sat right next to us. Aww. Turns out George is a fan of Hunter. Ah! And I was like, he's a huge baseball fan. Ah. He loves the Cincinnati Reds. Okay. And he's a oh, huge. The second time the Reds came up. I the know. Show. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> I thought indeed. So he's a huge Hunter fan. So he's, he's he with told Hunter, he was like, you know, Hunter was like, hi, I'm Hunter. He's like, I know who you are. Um, I'm a big fan and I like your stockings. <gasps> so he, he's, he sits down with you guys. He's the, him and Amal sit down next to us. And I was like, what is even happening right now? George Clooney is sitting right here. Hunter, like Hunter's just like, Alexis, hold it together. Like just hold it together. And so he starts talking to Hunter, asking about like World Series and like, 
you know, what his training process is like, whatever, you know, so he's like asking him real questions. And so Amal and I are just talking and I'm like, I cannot believe this. Like, I cannot freaking believe this. Like George Clooney is geeking out over my husband. What is even happening right now? Like I could have just like slid off my chair and just like died and gone to heaven. What did you and George Clooney talk about? So, um, we, he taught, he asked me what I did. And so mind you, I'm sitting at a table with an Academy Award winning Actor. Actor. Producer. Thespian. Yeah. Creator. I don't know if he's won anything for his movies, like production wise. But anyways. Academy Award winning actor. A human rights lawyer is his wife. Okay. World Series champion. And I'm like, oh, um, I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> uh, but it's a really good hi. one. So you know, I tell him, he's like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm a YouTuber. And I have this thing called Twitch. And he's like, what is that? So I explain it to him. And they're just like, we don't know social media. And I was like, no, don't even worry about it. Tell me more about you. Oh, <laughs> you wouldn't have No, but you have nothing to be embarrassed about. I mean, like they're making like real changes in the world. You know what I mean? And I'm oh, like, okay. hey, let's talk about this Cuban coffee that I'm going to fly to Miami with Jared with. And you, you, know? you know what, Alexis? I I think you sell yourself short, oh, but I think it's you. a lovely story. Nonetheless, um, I'm glad that he, I'm glad that you had the opportunity to meet these two folks. And they were so gracious. Yeah, uh, they were y'all. so down to earth, so nice. That's like, cool. that's really really cool. And I'm glad for a second when you said guess who I met, I thought it was going to be Oprah. For a second, I was about to die. No, uh, but I did stay in the same villa as her. Okay, so you have you have, it wasn't really a villa; it was like a room. So but you have touched like the faucet. That Oprah this has trip touched. was so yes, and okay. I slept in the same bed as Oprah. <gasps> there we are. Okay, you're getting there. I know. You're getting closer. I'm so much closer. You're zeroing. Our in. degrees of separation are really okay. Narrowing you've now down. slept in the same room as Oprah. You're getting. You're really getting there. So close. That's really cool. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing your amazing, like marvelous, exotic adventures. Isn't that crazy? Us. Yes, it is. It is cool. Did this you... trip was unreal, Jared. When yeah. I tell you that, like this trip is, we got to go to Hobbiton. Oh, 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 with their own doors? Yes. Oh, 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 what was it like? And I'm pissed at us that we have not created our own Shire. We well, should create a Shire here in Oakland. Okay, can we do that? How do we make a Shire <laughs> in Oakland? That's what I'm trying to figure out. How to make a Shire in Oakland? Yeah. I mean, I'm in. Okay. <laughs> yes. If you need a Shire and Oakland coordinator, let me know. Yes. I'm there. I don't know anything about building homes. I don't know why homes, I picked Oakland. But but <laughs> you know what? No, Oakland seems a great place. There's a lot of hills. It works. Yeah. You, shire, you need a Shire, you need hills. You do. You gotta, You're you right. You do. In the hole of the ground, there lived a hobbit. Not a nasty, dirty, wet hole. Nowhere dry, bare, sandy hole. It was a hobbit hole. And that yes. means comfort. I love... Hobbit so much that this keeps Lord of the Rings keeps coming up on the show. Actually, I was just on Comedy Button and they were all making fun of me for loving Lord of the Rings. Really? And I, oh yeah, yeah. There's a Photoshop of me with as Ian McKellen. Do that's you? Kind of adorable. Okay, so I really enjoyed The Hobbit more than I did Lord of the Rings. I enjoy them both deeply, but I especially like Lord of the Rings. The Hobbit. Uh, now, maybe I need to rewatch Lord of the Rings. I uh, maybe I I actually just rewatched Lord of the Rings because uh, because of that podcast. Yeah, I um, rewatched The Hobbit. But uh, before but f- we went, and I'm one of those old nerdy men who like people that for me it's like I really enjoyed the film. However, I especially enjoyed the book because <laughs> obviously the book is full of rich lore that I really. But I do think sure. it's a, a beautiful story, um, and I like and I like reading. And it's been Lord of the Rings, my all time favorite book. Um, really? Yeah, it's my all time favorite book. Um, I really love it very much. So anyway, I'm excited about that. You yeah. see the Hobbit all You got to see with all my, and in New Zealand, there's like a, like a, an eagle in the airport, right? I've heard about this. Is um, that a, it might be in Christchurch or it's Auckland. It's in or? Well, uh, Wellington. It's in Wellington. So yes. there is Gandalf riding an eagle like in the airport. Yes. Man. I know. The airport sucks, man. We don't have That's a Gandalf on an eagle. This is when I was like really in the New Zealand euphoria. I was like, <sighs> our airports are totally sucky. The LAX <laughs> sucks. <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> Why don't we have Gandalf yeah. on an eagle in our airport? <laughs> Dang it. Totally. I totally thought the same thing. The um, but yeah, Hobbiton was amazing. Oh, and okay. Hunter totally geeked out. He bought himself a Gandalf hat. <gasps> I know. How you know I... that's like his, he like wants to be a wizard. No, I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. He, in the worst way, wants to be a wizard. Okay, expound. Tell me more about Hunter's desire to be a sorcerer. Yeah, he just loves wizards. Okay, so like wizards in general. Like, I'm pretty sure that's why he grows. Wizards and- I'm pretty sure that's why he grows his beard the way he does. Well, I know he plays magic. Does he? Does he ever do D and D anything like that? He or? loves D and D. I didn't know that. Yes, <gasps> we're looking for a dungeon master here. Oh, <laughs> can you do it? Yeah, oh, absolutely. I'm. I so I. 
I'm that I'm that dork in every group that's always the DM. Like, yes, I, I, I'm real. I have a. I really kind of good at it. He wants to be one. <gasps> play D&D together. I'm yeah, so let's excited. Do it. Oh my gosh. I've never play played, but I've always wanted to. I feel like I would really love it. It is fun. It's all about imagination. Yeah. And it's it's about having a good time. It's about laughing. Yeah. When you're doing it right. Yeah. It's largely about laughing with people you love. We tried to do it like when we were just traveling, but yeah. then it just ended up becoming what would you do in this scenario? <laughs> in my it, People have different opinions on how it should work. I like it best when it's about a group of people, a group of friends coming together for an evening and getting getting a little tipsy and getting a little goofy and having funny things totally. happen and solving a couple of mysteries and yeah. just pretending they're kids for a little while. Yeah. I think that's fun. Yeah. You like Stranger Things? Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, that whole D&D vibe. He said that that's, that was his childhood. I didn't know he Mine liked Wizards. Minus the Upside Down. <laughs> okay, so no kidding. Like, when you all get back, we're going to play some D&D. D&D, yes. Hunter all will right. be so stoked. We're doing it. Yeah, yes. yeah, very, yeah, I love, I, I absolutely adore D&D. Okay, that's going to be fun. Yeah, we just got into this new game called Munchkin. Oh, I love Munchkin. You Angie do? and I play Munchkin all the time. No way. Oh, we're going to be friends. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry, I'm very excited. Munchkin is amazing. I just got Mallory into it, too. Every time Angie sees a gazebo, she elbows me and goes, you must face it alone. It doesn't matter where we are. She does this. Uh, That's amazing. Yeah, every time. You must face it alone. Everywhere. If we're getting any park anywhere. And yeah. she's like, we must face it alone. Wow, we are. I we're having a great time yeah. god knows our viewers i hope you guys are too <laughs> yeah okay so we love munchkin we yeah love we tried to play it one-on-one -on -one munchkin yeah you need more people for munchkin I well think. we still play you can do it you yeah can do it. except hunter always gets this one card where it's like the person that has that's level higher than you you can ask them for help without anything in exchange. Do you know that card? I do. I forget what it's called. And he always freaking gets that card. And I'm always above him. And then that's how he gets the win. And I'm like, this is such BS. Oh, that's beautiful. And I'm like, when we play one-on-one, -on -one, you have to take that card out because it just doesn't make sense. Um, yeah, yeah. I think that I agree with that. And Thank you. All and about he's like, house you rules. never take cards out. And I'm like, you're such a... Okay, so you, guys, you may know this. I don't know, but Steve Jackson Games has been selling much for a very long time. There's always ads. I know. I'm so mad that like we're just coming onto this game. So there are like T-shirts you can buy that give you advantages in the game. Like stop from, it. So you could hide one under a sweatshirt. Stop like, it. And then like like when something happens, you could pull it off and you have an advantage in the game. No like, freaking yeah. way. <laughs> so you could do stuff stop like that. Stop it. Too. <laughs> sneak up on me. that is amazing i have to do this you guys like yeah. this has to be done yeah, that's the thing there's hunter would be like what yeah there's t-shirts that give you bonuses it's it's adorable yes that I game's really silly if you never played munchkin by the way which we've got on for several minutes about it's a delightful uh card game by steve jackson games a lot of fun for for a group of friends you can pick up the rules very quickly it's all about just being silly yeah yeah it's really fun it's a lot um, of fun i love games god i love games i love games too yay all right we're gonna get together and play some munchkin yes when y'all get back that makes yes D&D &D and Munchkin. D&D &D and Munchkin night. I'm all there. I think we're going to wrap this particular episode up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I'm going to have a good time. Thank you, Alexis. And Thank uh, you. Thanks for having me, Jared. Oh, God. Thanks I for coming over. And Yeah, I, I really, it just, every time I see you, I feel happier about the world. You're Aww, a nice person. I like thanks, you a Jared. lot. That's uh, so nice. That's like the nicest compliment I think anyone could receive. So thank oh, you. I'd say it really, it just feel good tonight. So thanks a lot. Good. And folks, I, okay. So let's get Lexi does all kinds of marvelous things about making your life tastier and more fun. Yeah. Uh, and folks, one more time, where can they find you? YouTube.com forward slash let's get Lexi. I'm on all the socials. Let's get Lexi. And yeah, I'm all about feeling good and, yeah. you know, having fun. Yep. You're a good photographer. People should, really should check out your Instagram. Thank uh, you. you. Take a lot of lovely images there and, uh, and check out the show, please. And thank you for supporting us. We want to thank our Patreon producer, Robert Nieder, whose generous support makes the show possible. And everyone who supports us on Patreon.com slash Jared Petty. That's Patreon.com slash Jared Petty. If you're not one of the people that does that, hey, guess what? Uh, it would really help if you were. And also, you know what? Hey, here comes the spiel. But you know why everybody always asks you for subscriptions on iTunes and YouTube? Uh, because they help a lot. All those reviews, all those comments, all those subscriptions make a big difference for the show. If you can do that, if you can take the time, um, please do. iTunes reviews, five stars is always the right rating. Uh, so remember <laughs> that. And uh, hey, thanks, y'all. And you can always write to us at mail at pocketsfullsoup.com. That's mail at pocketsfullsoup.com. 
happy to have you here. Thank you. Support this guy, you guys. He's Aww, the best. Too Jared sweet. is the best. Thanks, Alexis. Aw. See you next time, friends. Be good to each other. Bye. Bye-bye.